Welcome back to the Global Landscapes Forum 2019 here in Luxembourg, where we're discussing sustainable finance and finding breakthroughs in sustainable finance. And this afternoon, I have the pleasure of speaking with Musonda Mumba, who is the chief of the Terrestrial Ecosystems Unit at UN Environment. Um, and she also has 20 years experience uh, working at both scientific and political levels on climate change, adaptation, conservation, protected areas management and wetlands ecology. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And our impromptu interview that we decided <laughs> to have. <laughs> so you, I understand you're also the new chair for the Global Partnership for Forest and Landscape Restoration. Indeed. Please tell us more about that. Well, thank you so much. So um, I just took over the, the reins as the new chair yesterday here in Luxembourg. Okay, wow. uh, and it's been really wonderful because uh, basically I was elected into this position. And so what does that mean? That means that um, I'm basically providing um, leadership and also guidance to a constituency of about 40 to 42 organizations, including governments. Wow. Um, and so it's quite, quite exciting. So what does this particular um, constituency do? It brings together organizations like the World Bank, conservation organizations like WWF, mm -hmm. um, Common Lands, ourselves, UN Environment, and also um, organizations like IUCN, the World Conservation Union, that have been working on forest and landscape restoration. So we are really should be the go-to kind of group of people to talk about and provide guidance on why restoration matters, how should it be done, and where can it be done. But more importantly, it's also around conserving the lands that we have so that they're not degraded. So it's quite exciting. It's a two-year position, okay, so I'm great. looking forward to the next two years and see how that goes. Amazing. Congratulations. Thank you so quite much. Very exciting. And, you know, our first interview that we had was in Nairobi back in 2018. Indeed. Yes, indeed. And then it's 2019 now, our fourth and last um, GLF of this year. Wow. So what has culminated after our interview? Because it's been quite a while and then you've been to many GLFs too. So yes, yes, yes. You know, when, when, we, when we spoke in, in Nairobi, if you remember, we had just um, announced that the government of El Salvador was exploring an idea. Mm. And that idea, that was August 2019, right. 2018 18, actually. Yes, yeah. um, the government of El Salvador presented an idea to the government of Kenya and, and also just the GLF constituency right. around a possibility of having the UN decade on ecosystem restoration. So from that particular GLF, we had a meeting and then they ended up presenting to the uh, United Nations General Assembly that mm -hmm. September, which then, you know, went through a process of vetting and review mm -hmm. by 1st of March this year we had a decade Amazing. pass through. So for me, I see that the GLF as, as a mechanism and platform where you know, ideas are birthed. And, and really, I think it's, it's the GLF mechanism that facilitated and made sure that this decade comes into fruition. And this is a decade for everybody. And this is a decade where we begin to restore the planet, all our spaces that are degraded, be it oceans, be it mountains, be it rangelands, forests, grasslands, all manner of ecosystems. Uh, very much that are connected to us as humans. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really exciting. A lot has happened. Yes, a lot has happened since then. Yeah. So I, w I was going to ask you, so how do you, do you think that the Global Landscapes Forum is an important conference, important gathering of people? And Absolutely. I think for me, it's an important mechanism yeah. and an important uh, uh, platform where we convene people who are practitioners, mm -hmm. people who do real stuff on the ground, get their hands dirty, get their feet dirty, and really look at how they can work within these landscapes. But also at the same time, it's, it's a mechanism and platform where we convene individuals and, and bring together um, the non-traditional, you know, you know, I mean, for example, we in Ghana not mm -hmm. so long ago, right. um, you know, in Accra, just the end of October, for the first time, we had people from royal houses. We had the Queen of Buganda, right. you know, Queen Sylvia Naginda, who came, and we had the Queen Mothers of the Ashanti Kingdom. We, I mean, it was amazing. And the, the reason and rationale for that was how do we bring the non-state actors to a conversation around restoration, for example. Right. And, and I see the GLF as that mechanism that doesn't have to go through the hoops and loops of you know, bigger meetings like the UN that are very complicated right. you know, to get accreditation and all of that. The GLF has a loose network of, of individuals and has that freedom mm -hmm. to really converse and give great ideas and move forward. Yes, like for like example, like here in Luxembourg, where Absolutely. now we're doing the whole financial Absolutely. sector because we do need them in, you know, as part of the conversation. Absolutely. So we have, um, you know, the financial constituency here in Luxembourg that are, and we're literally in their backyard. Right. So here we are talking to bankers, talking to investment, um, you know, mechanisms and spaces to be able 
to also be part of the conversation, particularly around sustainable land use. So it's really great. Great. Well, thank you. And uh, you, I also understand you're going to COP, right? You're going to be at the COP Indeed. 25 in Madrid. Indeed. So I'm heading there tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. So what, mm -hmm. what do you hope will come out of that? Um, I'm really hoping that, that um, you know, we, we've kind of come full circle, really mm. looking at different landscapes, but also looking at various issues around the planet. Mm. But this time around, the focus is around the blue uh, environment, which is mostly around oceans. Mm. And so I really hope that with this COP, we begin to see the relevance and importance of these masses of landscapes or masses of ecosystems like the oceans that are not only huge in, in terms of scale, but also are important in doing carbon sequestration. How can we you know, raise the profile of these fragile ecosystems to the world? And the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change actually did a report this year that also looked at oceans and the cryosphere, so looking at elements of mountains. So the connectivity of the landscape, we mm -hmm. have to remember, and I think that's what the, Glo the Global Landscapes Forum does very well, to show this interconnectivity mm. of landscapes. So all the member states that are meeting in Madrid really should be looking on hoisting and taking this to the next level, changes in policy frameworks, and also looking at how we combat climate change by protecting these fragile ecosystems. Great. And mm. I, I guess my, my last question would be like, you know, we know the state of the planet at the moment at mm. this tipping point, and we, you know, we're trying to do what we can, you know, in terms of action. Mm. But are we there yet, or does it more, do we need to be doing things faster now? I think we need to be doing things faster, and which means we need to bring everyone on board. Right. And I think which is why we cannot leave behind the financing institutions. Right. These financing institutions have invested and have funded some very detrimental investments that are bad for our, for our ecosystems. And as such, um, so for us really, we see that the inclusivity and moving quicker, leaving no one behind right. in part of taking care of the planet is important. So, um, and I think there's a realization, which is why the decade went through so quickly within the UN process. I think there's a realization of the danger of actually not doing something, the danger of inaction. Right. The danger of inaction has implications for us as humans, whether we like it or not. And that means, you know what? This planet will continue to exist anyway, and mm -hmm. we could be all wiped out. Right. So that's a possibility. So I think for me, the, there's an opportunity now for us to act now. Right, Yeah. yesterday. Yesterday, in fact. Indeed. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you so and much. And sharing a few minutes with us. Great. And, and good luck with uh, Madrid. Thank tomorrow. you so much. Thank you, Masanda. Thank